Okay, good morning everyone. This is Colleen Florio of the Adirondack Health Institute. Welcome again to this morning's Medical Village webinar. Hope you find it informative. We will have uh, plenty of time for questions and answers at the end of the slide presentation. If you would like to type questions in to the question uh, box on your screen, you may. Uh, otherwise, uh, you'll be able to just raise your hand and I will unmute you during the question and answer session following the slides. <clears throat> During today's webinar, I'll begin with an overview of the project goal and the currently planned implementation. We'll speak briefly about the requirements and work plan, and then spend most of the time on project speed and scale, as well as project budget, and click uh, due date, and the manner for submission. The Medical Village Project for hospitals is designed to reduce excess bed capacity and to repurpose any unneeded hospital infrastructure into a medical village that creates a one-stop shop for consumers to access needed services in one location. I think many of you on the phone actually um, wrote up your medical village plans uh, last, uh, last November, December and you're intimately familiar <laughs> with the purpose uh, of the project and have proposed uh, specific um, numbers of beds to be repurposed as well as the types of services that would then be put in place. There are four medical AHI PPS service area, one each at Champlain Valley Physicians Hospital, Adirondack Medical Center, Moses Ludington, and Glen Falls. For each medical village project, we would like, if you haven't already done so, each medical village project will need a designated leader. For each project, you'll complete a work plan, as well as a speed and scale template, and a project budget. So each medical village project need a project champion. That medical village project champion is really the subject matter expert on that specific medical village project. They'll oversee the work plan and the budget, and they'll be supported by an AHI project manager. Um, I don't know yet who will be in that position. We're actually recruiting for project managers right now. Um, you would want to include the cost of the project, given that the fund flow process to cover project budget is still in development. Um, in the interim, we can execute an MOA, a memorandum of agreement with AHI to help cover your organization's costs for having a project champion dedicated to this project. We have in fact set aside some dollars from our current planning grant for that type of cost. So the project work plan. The work plan at this point is characterized as a high-level work plan. It would be an outline of the steps needed to meet each project requirement and milestone. Those project requirements and milestones have been uh, predefined by the Department of Health. Milestone with each of the steps below them that you develop in your work plan would then be uploaded to the district tracker. The district tracker is a tool that some of you have already seen. Uh, some of you saw a demo of this tool at a meeting in Lake Placid um, a few weeks ago. And basically, the tracker is a tool where we'll track progress on that work plan. The partners implementing the project, as well as the project managers themselves, We'll use the district tracker to monitor progress and to upload documentation that shows whether or not the steps and the project requirements have in fact been met. For Medical Village, we're asking, I think the best route for Medical Village is for each village to do their own work plan at this point. Ultimately, the goal for um, yeah, every project is 
is to have a single high-level work plan of that project. However, medical villages are very uh, distinct in the steps that need to be undertaken for each specific implementation. And at this point, I think it makes the most sense for each medical village to simply do their own work plan. We can then look at those work plans and determine what are those very high-level steps that are in common that can be entered into the tracker. Of course, you'll still need your own detailed work plan that's specific to your medical village, so I think we'll um, proceed with that with those. Completed work plans are due at AHI on April 22nd, and the email address is shown on your screen for how to submit those work plans. The work plans, the work plans will follow a template that is simply the problem with a space for you to put in the steps that get you towards those requirements and milestones as well as the target date. For Medical Village, uh, the template will be distributed will be distributed March 6th. Project milestones in metrics. The milestones in metrics have not changed since you would have looked at them last December. The link for the official document that lists all the requirements, milestones, and metrics the link to that is shown on your screen. The work plan template that you'll receive on March 6th is simply those same requirements and milestones with a space. You can add in the high-level steps that it takes to get towards those requirements with a target date and the person responsible. Sorry, there's a little bit of a lag in the slide from the voiceover, and that's the reason for the pauses. While we're waiting for the, it to catch up here, the, the reason that the work plans are not due until April is simply because while we need those work plans to populate the district tracker and begin to monitor progress, those work plans are not part of the required submission that AHI sends in to the Department of Health on April 1st. So many of you are familiar with the April 1st implementation plan due date. Those work plans are not part of that submission. So we just wanted to give you more time to do a, to do a good quality work plan and to focus on the pieces that are part of the April 1st submission. Part of our April 1st submission to the Department of Health is the project speed and scale. Again, there's a template for project speed and scale. And that template is due back to AHI on March 13. The instructions for how to submit are shown on your screen, and I'll show you that template in just a minute. Basically, when you see the template, you're going to see that there are two spots that you need to fill out on the template. In one spot in the template, you're going to indicate the quarter, by the end of which all of the project requirements will have been met by your team. In addition, you'll indicate the expected number of actively engaged patients by quarter. On your template, you're going to see some red numbers that are pre-filled in. And those red numbers, PPS level, speed and scale commitment. So those are the is the number of participating patients who had two or more distinct services at a medical village in a given year. For the, for the district projects, there are three different county methodologies. 
the way that we count the numbers of actively engaged is counting method three. So you see on your screen the three methods. Medical Village is counting method three. Counting method three is a count of patients that meet the criteria over a one-year measurement period. And duplicate counts of patients are not allowed. And this count is not additive across the district years. So basically, we're counting up the number of patients that meet the actively engaged definition, that is, they receive two, at least two distinct services from a medical village, and we can only count them once in a given measurement year. <clears throat> this page shows uh, an example of how to do counting methodology three. The only only have the number of actively engaged patients. Back in January, the PPS had to submit a speed and scale document for every project. In that document, we provided a number of actively engaged patients that was for the PPS as a whole. What we're asking you to do now is to think specifically about your implementation and determine your organization or your implementation's expected number of actively engaged patients over time. What you see now on your screen is the implementation speed and scale table. At the top, what you see is the project implementation speed. represent those numbers that the PPS has already submitted to DOH in the January submission for speed and scale. In other words, you can see that we indicated that all four medical villages will have met all the project requirements by the end of DISRIP year four, quarter two. So by the end of June, in district year four, we projected that all medical villages will have met all of the project requirements. In a moment, I'll show you a table that lines up the calendar year through the district years as a reference. What we're asking you to do on your speed and scale table is to find the row for your medical village implementation indicate which district year and which quarter your project will have met all of the requirements. Ideally, what the Department of Health is looking for is to see that the projects are ramping up over time and that some medical villages may be on an earlier time frame than others, but in total, all four of them must have met all the project requirements by district year four, quarter two. So for your, that's the latest date that you could put an X, is district year four, quarter two. If you believe that you'd be able to meet all the requirements earlier, you would put an X at an earlier point in time on this chart. Then patient speed is shown at the bottom. This is the speed that patients will meet the actively engaged definition. So these numbers, both the speed numbers and the scale numbers, are part of the formula that determines the ultimate payments to the PPS. Given that the numbers are tied to payment, we projected numbers that we felt were very achievable. So these numbers may look very low to you. 
And that's okay because we scored well on the project. And if we exceed the numbers that we projected, there are bonuses for high performance. So these numbers may look low to you, but you don't, I wouldn't be concerned about, um, I would just be concerned about going over them. What we need to show is for each medical village implementation, how many patients you believe through your medical village will meet that criteria over time. Back in January, that submission required us to indicate numbers for each six month period. That's why you see red numbers for, for patients engaged. Only, you only see two numbers in each calendar year. Now for this submission, we'll be showing numbers for every quarter. So what you're being asked to do is, again, find the row for your medical village, look, refer back to that definition of actively engaged, and fill in on a quarterly basis when, how many patients you believe will meet that criteria. Importantly, the number of actively engaged patients follows counting methodology three. So that number is basically reset at the beginning of each new calendar year. For the numbers that are given on the screen, we've indicated that during DISRIP year three, by the end of the second quarter, 500 patients will received two or more stimulus of quarter four of that same year, that number climbs to 1,500. Then, during district year four, basically, we would reset to zero. The patients that are counted during district year four that receive two or more distinct services from the medical village do not have to be new and distinct patients from the ones who were counted during district year three. So we can't count the same patient twice within the same measurement year, but the same patient can again meet the criteria for active being engaged during a later measurement year. That we have much greater capacity in our medical villages, and that in the first six months of district year four, 2,500 patients will have met that definition, and by the end of that year, that number will have climbed to nearly 5,000. At this point, we would need uh, each medical village to complete the table for their expected number of actively engaged, and I'd advise you to really project um, that number as, as, accurate, as accurately as possible based on the capacity of the services that you're planning at your medical village. And we don't need to be concerned if the sum across all four medical villages exceeds the commitments that we've previously made. It must at least meet them, but it's fine if it exceeds it. So you don't have to worry about um, trying to get all four medical villages to exactly match up to this specific number. As long as the numbers that you submit to us hold this or greater the slide is going to show you how the district years line up with the calendar years. District year one begins on April 1st, so it's a short it's a short year, it's really nine months. We were advised uh, to make few if any commitments during district year one. Uh, and so that's what you that's what you would have seen on your on your template uh, previously. District year two is 12 2016, Desert Year 3, 2017, and Desert Year 4, 2018. So the template that you saw for Speed and Scale will be posted on the website along with the recording and uh, the, the PowerPoint slides. Those will be those are available now, so those will be posted. Uh, we'll get those posted for you.
And again, that work plan template will be coming uh, a little bit later in the week. So we'll move on now to project budget. A project budget template has been released. There was one updated version that came out following the meeting that we had in Lake Placid a few weeks ago. So if you simply go to our website, click on the digital section, um, you'll be able to find the budget template. In addition to the template, the website also has a PowerPoint that provides a good overview of the budget and process. And within that budget template, there's also a sheet of instructions. For anyone on the webinar who has not yet, um, who has not yet attended a meeting where, where there's been some budgeting information, I would strongly suggest that you uh, and read through the PowerPoint and the instruction. There will be a webinar this Friday from noon to 1 p.m. That's a project budgeting webinar. The information for how to register for that webinar is on our website. That webinar will be hosted by AHI CFO Lynn Wadley. Lynn will walk through the budget template she'll be and she'll be available to answer any questions. For anyone on the phone who attended the meeting uh, in Lake Placid back on the 13th, um, what Lynn is going to be doing in the webinar on Friday is nearly identical to what she covered at that meeting in Lake Placid. The only change is that she's been able to get answers to a couple of the questions that people had about budgeting. In fact, one of those questions is addressed in the bullet point. You're going to include your expense as well as your revenue, and you do not have to portion out it to be Medicaid specific. And what I mean by that is in a given project, if you need to budget, you have an expense, say, that is a, a position, a portion of uh, even a clinician's time. You're not required to determine what proportion of that clinician or that position. You don't need to determine what proportion of that person's time is dedicated specifically to Medicaid patients. You can budget for that person's time as a whole. At this point in time, that's what we're looking at. Um, the budgets are due also on the 13th, and You'll submit them to that same email address with the subject line project budget. And I will, I will answer, if I have the answers, I will provide you with um, answers to questions during today's Q&A uh, regarding budget as well. So in summary, this is where we stand as we approach the start of DISRIP year one. Uh, we are, AHI is uh, working to submit any additional partners to DOH that want to join the PPS. Uh, DOH has opened up a window where we can add partners to the PPS. Those new partners are counted not towards the overall uh, project valuation formula, where we take, where we get attributed lives based on partners in the network that drive value. That, that, that whole uh, process did close. We can submit additional partners that are counted for the purposes of the performance, uh, of project performance. So uh, we can add some, we can add new partners and um, we're in the process of identifying any gaps in the PPS network and reaching out to potential partners who um, may want to join or may want to reconsider joining. The next deadline is the March 13th deadline, which is a deadline for all of the project teams to submit their budget templates and their speed and scale templates to AHI. Following which, we will submit a draft of our entire implementation plan package to KPMG on March 16th. We'll then get feedback from KPMG. They are the state measure support team. KPMG
Then if exchange, the MRT Innovation Exchange it has been, is a really a communication forum. It's been set up by the New York State Department of Health. Uh, the mix is becoming uh, an increasingly important uh, form of communication for the states with that. In fact, it will be an increasingly important form of communication within our PPS itself. So I would encourage you to create an account. And the uh, link where you can create that, that account is shown on your screen. There's a variety of different groups that you can join. So you would be able to join um, you'd be able to join a group that was specific, say, to Medical Village or to any other project and learn about what other PPSs are doing. It provides the PPSs an opportunity to share information and resources with each other. And we also have the, the option as a PPS um, to create our own closed groups that so we can use them for our project team to share information and communicate with one another. So we'll be getting some guidance um, from the department that's already available on the logistics of that, but at this point in time, I would encourage you to go ahead and get an account set up so that you're ready. And with that, that brings me to the end of the formal part of today's webinar, and we will be opening it for questions. So if you do have a question, everyone is still currently muted. If you do have a question, uh, raise your hand. I think you can see how to do that over in your, um, your, your interactive box on the side. I okay, can. so Karen. Yeah, I, I might have missed this in the very beginning. Um, are we going to get copies of these slides? Or are they available on the website? They will be available. If they don't get posted today, they'll definitely get posted tomorrow. The Great. slides will be posted as well as a recording in case you want to listen. She's on vacation, um, so I just wanted to make sure I can capture that for her. Thanks, Colleen. Okay. Great. Um, for clarification about the distinct services when um, counting actively engaged patients, for distinct services, do they mean like two different provider types, like an, an ER or? Yeah, I, mean, I, I have the same question. They haven't given us. Any examples or any solid clarification? I think you know the medical village contact is that there's a variety of services all available in one, you know, medical village location, and I'm, I believe they're going to they're going to determine um, those these numbers based on claims. And I don't I, I haven't they haven't given the details on that process. So I think you know at this point in terms of projecting, just any the idea would just be any two any two services. From at that, that Hi, this is Bonnie Jameson, Vice President of Regional Planning and Development with AHI. Um, for some of you, you know that I was doing the workforce section of the application back in December, and I would just note that this particular um, project, I didn't receive anything um, that related to 
requires redeployment, retraining, or reduction. So um, as part of your submissions for the 13th, and maybe that'll come up in, in the budgets as well, just to really um, highlight anything that you think is related to workforce so we can make sure that's included in the workforce section of our implementation plan moving forward. And are there any other questions from any of you? Okay, seeing no more questions, we'll close the webinar for, for, uh, for today, and I thank you for your time. Have a good day.